solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. It's a well of pure water when I'm thirsty and dry, and bread when I'm hungry and worn. When the battle is raging, it's my faithful sword, a shelter from life's troubled storms. It's a light to my pathway and a lamp to my feet. When the world gets so dark you can't see And I'm not made one change in one word that it says But it's sure made a change in me This blessed old book that I hold in my hand It's true from beginning to end It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin find when you read it that there's something wrong, then there's something wrong with you. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand is true from beginning to end. It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. This blessed old book that I Take your Bible this morning, if you would, please, and open to the book of Mark. <clears throat> Mark chapter 5, please, for our scripture reading today. <coughs> Mark 5, we're going to begin in verse 24 and read through verse 34. Mark 5, 24 through 34 and we read the verses responsively we begin together on 24 and I read 25 together on 26 and alternating like that till we end together on verse 34 of Mark chapter 5 and as our custom is let's stand together to read the scripture all of us standing to read God's word and let's begin together on verse 24 of Mark 5 ready and Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him and a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole." And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing to the reading of the scripture here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We thank you, Lord, for not only inspiring your word, but preserving it for us. So we hold copies of your word in our hands this morning. And Lord, I'm praying that you will speak to each of us uh, through the truths that you have from this passage, which we've read today. I pray, Lord, that each of our hearts would be open 
and ready to receive what the Spirit of God would give to each of us today. So, Lord, tune our hearts to your heart and use the special to help towards that end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Creation shows the power of God, there's glory all around. And those who see must stand in awe, for miracles abound. I believe in miracles, I've seen a soul set free. Out the work of God, it's plain for all to see. The miracle that He has wrought should lead to Calvary. I believe in miracles, I've seen a soul set free. Miraculous, the change in one redeemed through. Seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn side. I believe in miracles, for I believe in God. The love of God, O oh power divine, is wonderful to see. The miracle of grace performed within the heart. Of me. I believe in miracles, I've seen a soul set free, miraculous the change in one, redeemed through Calvary. I've seen the lily put its way up through the stubborn Now, Father, we bow before you in prayer, and we're thankful, Lord, that you're the God of miracles, and that the day of miracles has not passed, because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we're asking you to meet with us this morning and to speak to our hearts. Again, Lord, I thank you for the Bible. I thank you, Lord, that we have copies of it in our hands this morning. And I'm asking you, Lord, to use the Word of God in each one of our hearts and lives today. And Lord, those in the room that are in need of a miracle today, I pray that they'd be connected to the One who can do the miraculous in their life. So Lord, move up and down the aisle and in and out of the rows and stop at every occupied seat and minister to each individual here this morning. Keep us from distraction. Keep us our minds from wondering that we would miss what you have to say to each of us today. Help me as I bring the message and help each individual as they listen. May your will be done in these next few minutes we spend together. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Mark chapter 5, have your Bible open there. People are searching for many different things today. Some people are looking for love. Some people are simply looking for money. Some are looking for opportunity. Some are certainly looking for answers. (laughs) And they're not even sure what the questions are. But some are just looking for a miracle. You may have ever been in that situation before where you'll say, 
I think we need a miracle. The truth is, you can get in certain situations and certain circumstances where the only thing, the only resort you know of is, we need a miracle. Now let me define, Webster defines a miracle as this, an event that appears to be contrary to the laws of nature and is regarded as an act of God. In other words, you find yourself in a situation that you know naturally there's no way out of it. Or naturally there's no answer to it. You've got to have an act of God. That would be something miraculous. You know you can't solve your problem on your own. You've tried everything. You've looked everywhere. And no success. But oftentimes what people fail to do is they fail to look to the one who can take care of that need. The one who can provide the miracle that they need. We serve a miracle working God. There is nothing beyond His ability. There is nothing that is too hard for God. God can do anything. And God is able to do anything. Now, Jesus has performed many miracles. If you would take time to uh, go up to this point in the Lord's earthly ministry, He has already turned water into wine. He has already healed the nobleman's son. He has cast out demons. He has healed Peter's mother-in-law. He has healed many of the sick in this city. He has cleansed a leper. He healed the centurion's servant. He has healed a paralyzed man. He healed a man with a withered hand. And He has raised a widow's son. So, we, we get into the text today, and He's on His way to do another miracle. Jairus, <clears throat> who is a ruler of the synagogue, had an only daughter, 12 years of age. And she was dying. And so he comes to Jesus. By the way, there's a whole, there's a whole sermon just in that story in itself because here's a man who's of the Jewish synagogue and a ruler of the Jewish synagogue who will lose his position and lose his standing, lose his occupation. All of that put on the line because he's going to see Jesus. But he knows... It's his daughter's only hope. He needed a miracle. And when Jesus agrees to go with him to see his daughter, the crowd is moving, Jesus is moving, the disciples are moving, all the entourage is moving, but in that crowd is a woman. And that's who we read about this morning. This woman has had what the Bible calls an issue of blood. That's all it, it describes She's in, been bleeding for 12 years. And she is not any better. And in fact, she's growing worse. I would imagine she's quite anemic. I would imagine she'd be quite weak. And she's trying to fight her way and to stay with the crowd and to keep up with Jesus. She's been searching for answers, but she needs a miracle. That's what she's after. And the encounter that she had with Jesus is what I want to spend some time looking at this morning. When you're looking for a miracle. The first thing I want you to notice about this woman is, is her, her severe desperation that she had. Notice with me verse 25 of Mark chapter 5. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. You know, here she was, with an issue of blood that she couldn't do anything about. She had a condition, and she couldn't find a cure. She couldn't find anything that made her better. That's how many people are when it comes to salvation. They know there's something missing. They know there's a void in their heart. There's a void in their life. And they, they try to fill it with, with work or they try to fill it with possessions or they try to fill it with popularity or fame or whatever and, and they're, they're, they're the pleasures. And only to find it's still empty. That it doesn't satisfy. And you know, don't, don't overlook 
the greatest miracle of all. And by the way, don't, don't think that God doesn't do miracles anymore. God still is in the miracle working business. And by the way, the greatest miracle of all is still salvation. How, how can He take a person and by faith in Jesus Christ transform a life? He does that. And some of you are sitting in this room this morning. In fact, all of us who know Christ as our Savior are miracles. There's no other way to explain the change in your life. I, I'm looking at Fred Messer. And, and I'm glad you're awake this morning, Fred, listening to this, okay? <laughs> hey, Fred, you know what? Fred was uh, in desperate means. Were you not? His, his life, his marriage, everything was, was about ready to be ruined. He was not a fun guy to be around. His wife would probably testify. And, and he, he started, and, and by the way, I'm sure he tried all kinds of things to try to fix what he, what he had, but he couldn't fix it. And, and here's Fred Messer who begins to, to read the Bible. A fellow who he works with says, you start reading the, 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 the book of Romans. And so Fred begins to read the book of Romans every night for a month. And when he'd have a question, he'd ask the fellow at work and the fellow would answer the question and try to guide him a little bit. And after 30 days, he said, okay, I'm done with Romans. Now what do I do? He says, you read the Gospel of John. And so he started reading the Gospel of John. Well, the Gospel of John said, these things are written that, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And that believing you might have life in His name. And somewhere along reading the Gospel of John, he believed in Jesus Christ as His Savior. He believed He was the Son of God. And you know what happened? His life began to change. You say, oh, your life can just change by reading the Bible? Yes. Your life can change by receiving Christ as your Savior? Yes. And now all of a sudden, here's a man who, who was, was kind of mean and, I mean, was hard to get along with. Uh, and I, those, I, I'm not putting words in your mouth, am I? I mean, this was you, your testimony. They told me, now it's been how many years ago, Fred? Five years? Five years. You can't believe it now. He's such a big teddy bear, you know. But uh <laughs> talks about the difference that it's... And he said, and by the way, I think his wife noticed a difference. His children noticed a difference. said, man, well, something's happened to Dad. Something's happened in his life. Yeah, you know what happened? Jesus Christ happened in his life. That's, that's a changed life. You know what that is? That's a miracle. I'm sure it's, it's as miraculous as the blind man who got healed of his blindness in John chapter 9. And, and people come up and said, is that that, is that that blind guy? And they said, no, nah, it's just somebody who looks like him. That's not the same guy. And there could be people in this room today, if people saw you from your past life, they look at you now and say, is, is that you? And they'll have to say, no, nah, it's not them. It's just somebody who looks like them. They're totally different now. And you should be. Why? Jesus Christ makes a difference. That's miraculous. That's amazing. You know, years ago there was a, I think it's Prime America now, that, that company started out as a company called A.L. Williams. Anybody remember that name? A.L. Williams. They used to have bumper stickers. A.L. Williams changed my life. Well, how are those people doing now? Huh? A.L. Williams got bought out. <laughs> Taken over. And now, he'd, listen, I'm going to tell you something. No one or no thing is going to consistently, permanently change your life other than Jesus Christ. And He changes your life for good and forever. So she's, she's pretty desperate here. And she needs a miracle. Look at her situation. She's, she's sick. She has an issue of blood. Hemorrhaging, bleeding. A continual flow of blood. You know what that means? It would have meant she didn't have much energy at all. Her, her energy level, her hemoglobin would have been very low. She would have felt tired all the time. She, she wouldn't have had a lot of energy to, to especially go and catch up to somebody. I don't even think she felt like walking. And when you have no energy at all, you know some of you deal with that at time to time. It's very frustrating. It's very discouraging. And she went, listen, she went through that not for a few months, not for even a few years, 12 years. 
12 years and she couldn't get any better. I'd be tired of being tired. You'd get, you'd get uh, just de depressed by just thinking about no energy. That's where she was. She may have been experiencing the discouragement and depression. 12 years. No relief. Over a decade of sickness. She would have been considered unclean according to the Old Testament law. No one could have been around her. That would have resulted in some isolation for her. Can you imagine 12 years of isolation? 12 years of being by yourself? 12 years where people are afraid to even be close to you? She suffered. The Bible says here she suffered many things of many physicians. Now some of you could have that testimony probably. Not that physicians are... But they are practicing medicine, you understand. She had the effects of her disease. But you understand, think of the time she went to a doctor who said, oh, I can help you. And her hopes would get up, only to never get better, only get worse. Until she finds another doctor and, oh, no, I've got something for you. This is going to help you. And her hopes would get up again, only to be dashed again. Notice she suffered many things of many physicians. We're not talking a couple doctors here, a couple specialists. Over 12 years, you can see many doctors and many physicians. Nobody helped her, but they took her money anyway. She didn't get better, she only grew worse. And now she spent everything. She's sick, she's separated and isolated. And she's broke. That's her case. You talk about desperation. It's getting pretty desperate. But it doesn't get better. It gets worse. The Bible says she was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And obviously, as the blood... Listen, the life of the flesh is in the blood. You lose blood, you lose life. And I think she felt life draining out of her. She knew her life was going to be over soon if something didn't happen. And so she got to a place of desperation. And that's exactly where many people have to get before they look to Jesus for help. They have to get in a place of desperation. They say when someone is drowning, sometimes that, that lifeguard may wait till they go under the, for the third time before they go out to capture them and to rescue them. Why? Because they have to stop trying to save themselves. Or they can drown you along with them. They have to go out there and they have to be so spent and so exhausted and so desperate that they cling to you. And my friend, salvation is not when I give something to Jesus. That's not salvation. We have nothing to give. We're in desperate need of a Savior. We're the ones drowning. We're the ones that are sinking in sin. And we have no hope of saving ourselves. We can only cling to the Savior and say, You rescue me. And He saves us and rescues us. Desperation. Talking to people, you see, we all, have a, we all have a disease that we can't get rid of. It's called sin. And you can go to all the doctors you want. You can go to all the churches you want. You can go to all the religious ceremonies you want. It won't make you better. You'll only grow worse. The only way you get better is to come to Jesus Christ. The only way you're going to find the cure is to come and receive a miracle from Jesus. You can try everything else if you want. And people do. You can try the alcohol if you want. You can try the drugs if you want. You can try working and 
going up the corporate ladder if you want. You can, you can uh, give yourself to pleasure or material goods or possessions or making money. You can try it all if you want, but I'll guarantee you, you will still be miserable. You'll have money, but be miserable. You'll have a title and be uh, a CEO or have letters after your name, but you'll still be miserable. You need Jesus Christ. So I see your desperation. But secondly, I want you to see the information, the specific information that she received. Notice verse 27. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind Him and touched His garment. She heard of Jesus. Because she said in verse 28, If I may touch but His clothes, I shall be whole. You know, the important thing there is she heard of Jesus. How did she hear about Jesus? It wasn't a, there wasn't a Jerusalem dispatch. You know, there, there was no Twitter or Facebook, social media. Nobody texted her. Okay? How did she, someone had to tell her? Someone had to be talking about the one who had done miracles. We reviewed some of the miracles Jesus already had done. Maybe one of those folks had got to her. I don't think it was just about miracles he'd done. I really believe she personally heard from somebody whom Jesus had done a miracle for them. And it so encouraged her that she said, if I could just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. Because somebody told about their miracle. I don't think it was third or fourth hand testimony. I think it was someone personally who'd been changed by the touch of Jesus Christ. I think somebody shared a powerful testimony with that lady. Nothing is, listen, nothing's more powerful for you than your own testimony. How Jesus Christ has changed your life. How He has transformed you and made you a new person and made you a new creature in Him. And, and the things you used to do, you don't do them anymore. Why? There's been a great change since I've been born again. And you ought to tell someone about that. It'll transform their life. They'll say, well, if, if Jesus will do that for them, He'll do that for me. He certainly will. And in that way, many times, listen, your testimony is more powerful than the words of the preacher. The preacher, I can tell them that and they'll think, well, yeah, you're supposed to tell me that. You're a preacher. But you're somebody who they think just like them. And they'll listen. They'll say, well, if he can help you. Hey, Fred Messer tells somebody, they say, well, if he can heal your family and he can heal your marriage and he can change your relationship, man, God can do that in my family. And he can. And he will. But you've got to talk about it. The story is told of a Hollywood actor named Stuart Hamblin who was led to Christ by Billy Graham in 1949. Sometime after his conversion, as the story goes, Hamblin ran into John Wayne who asked him about the rumor around town that he'd changed his ways. And Hamblin told Wayne it was no secret what God had done for him and that he could do it for John Wayne too. Wayne said, well, it sounds like a song. And Hamblin, he said, you ought to write one. And Hamblin said, I think I will. And Ham Stuart Hamblin wrote the song, It is no secret what God can do. What He's done for others, He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. The problem is, there's too many Christians who are keeping it secret about what God can do. Hey, let's tell somebody. When's the last time you told anybody what Jesus has done for you? When's the last time you told anybody your testimony about how you received Christ as your Savior? Shame on us. Your testimony. We should be shouting it from the housetops. See, people need, people who are in desperation, they're looking 
for specific information. We have it. We have the information they're looking for. But we've got to tell it. We've got to let people know. Thank God she heard about Jesus because somebody told her. And she knew that if she touched His clothes, she could be made whole. I want you to see thirdly this morning her supernatural transformation. Here it is. She said in verse 28, If I may touch His clothes, I shall be whole. Verse 29, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now I want you to remember the great faith and the great determination she had to have just to get to Jesus. You ever, you ever been in a crowd? You ever, you ever try to work your way up through a crowd? And people are looking at you like, where are you trying to go, bud? Huh? She's wiggling her way up through there. And remember, she's weak. She's been losing blood for 12 years. She's discouraged. She's weak. She's anemic. And she's trying to battle her way through this crowd to touch the clothes of Jesus. A great crowd was around him. She reaches out through the crowd and touches the hem of his garment. And notice what the Bible said. She felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Immediately in another place it says the fountain of her blood was dried up. The miracle she was looking for, the miracle she longed for, has taken place. It happened, just like she thought it would, and she believed it would. The thing that she longed for, and I wonder if she thought about all the time and the money and the effort she spent. But I think maybe, she, maybe all that was wiped out in an instant because now she's whole. Now she's healed. She doesn't even think about that. The woman who was unclean is now clean. The woman who the law said was unclean and stay away from her now is not condemned at all. The Bible says, I'll read it to you in Romans 8 and verse 1. The Bible says this, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit is life in Christ Jesus, and hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God is sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Hey, there's no condemnation now for us, when we're in Christ Jesus. When you receive Christ your Savior, not only do you receive Him, the Bible calls that being in Christ. That means if I'm in Christ and God looks down for me, He's got to see me in Christ Jesus. And in Christ, Christ is perfect. Jesus never sinned. He's got absolute perfect righteousness. Where am I? By faith, I'm in Him. That means there's no condemnation. Because I, He sees me in Christ. And that's the only way that you don't have condemnation. Is you have to be inside Christ. You have to be in Him. And that's by faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's what she got that day. The woman in her physical disease sought Jesus. The truth of the matter is, those of us with our spiritual disease called sin, i got news for you. Jesus is looking for you. You're not looking for Him, but He's looking for you. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. When that one sheep of the 99 of the 100 sheep, that one sheep was lost, who went looking for it? The shepherd did. He's looking for that lost sheep. He's looking for you this morning. If you've never received Christ as your personal Savior, He's looking for you. He wants you to come to Him. And He can cure you of that spiritual disease called sin that will separate you from God. He can take that away. 
and give you His perfectness in its place. And you will have no condemnation in the sight of God. I don't know about you, but that's pretty miraculous. That's pretty amazing. That's what God is offering to us this morning. But the last thing I want you to see is not only her severe desperation and the specific information that she got and the supernatural transformation that took place, but let me notice with you the special connection. Verse 30. And Jesus, immediately knowing in Himself that virtue had gone out of Him, turned Him about in the press and said, Who touched My clothes? And the disciples said unto Him, Thou seest the multitude thronging Thee, and sayest Thou, Who touched Me? And He looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before Him and told Him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Of course, Jesus stops immediately and he says, Wait a minute, somebody touched me. <laughs> of course, the disciples are saying, Come on, Lord. There's a crowd here. Everybody's, everybody's crowding you. Everybody's touching you. What do you mean somebody touched you? A lot of people are touching you. Oh yeah, a lot of people were touching him, but not everybody was connecting with him. Not everybody was touching in faith like she was. Believing like she was. And, and there's a huge difference. There's, there's people who have an encounter with Jesus. There's people who are acquainted with Jesus. There's people who know about Jesus. There's people who say, oh, I've been in church all my life. Oh yeah, I know who Jesus is. I know about Jesus. Have you ever had an encounter with Him? Have you ever known Him personally? Have you ever been transformed by His touch and seen your life changed? Don't substitute knowing about Jesus for knowing Jesus. Don't, don't substitute that. Don't allow that to take place. Do you think Jesus didn't know who touched Him? Huh? No, He knew. He wanted her to publicly say, I touched him. He looked around, not at the crowd, he looked around at her. He looked right at her. You ever been in, you ever been in church, feel like the preacher's preaching at you? Hmm? Say, hey, looking at me when he was preaching. Jesus looked right at her. There's no doubt, she knew I'm the one, and he knows I'm the one. And buddy, she came forward. Maybe she was expecting rebuke. Maybe she was expecting Jesus to be unhappy, but he wasn't. He said, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, be whole of thy plague. Oh, she's not just another face in the crowd now. She's a special woman to Jesus. And she has been made whole. There's a, there's a connection. I like, the, I like the words he said, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Look at a verse of Scripture with me, will you? Uh, go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Notice with me verse 26. Galatians 3 and verse 26. If you're there, you can say amen. Okay? It says, For ye are all the children of God. How many ever heard that said? We're all God's children. Anybody ever hear that? Okay. But wait a minute. The verse doesn't stop there, does it? No. For ye are all God's children by faith in Christ Jesus. Did you know we're not all God's children? We're all God's creation. But we are not God's children until you put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's, that's why he could look on her and say, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. You became, she became a child of God that day by her faith in Jesus Christ. And when you by faith put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you trust His sacrifice for you on Calvary, then... Huh, by faith, you become a child of God. And you 
are now a child of God by your faith in Jesus Christ. Until then, you're not part of the family. You're not part of God's family. You're part of God's family when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Your faith makes you whole. That's the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Knowing Him personally as your Savior. Not knowing about Him. Not knowing that He died for the sins of the world. He did. But there's people who are in hell this morning who believe He died for the sins of the world. Because that doesn't take you to heaven. It's believing Jesus died for my sin. And I'll trust Him as my Savior. That's salvation. That's that personal connection. What He did for that woman that day physically, He'll do for you spiritually. He'll forgive your sin. He'll, he'll wipe it clean. You'll be whiter than snow, the Bible says. And you will have no condemnation on you at all. Because you're in Christ Jesus. Do you need a special touch from the Lord? Are you looking for a miracle this morning? Oh, you've bumped into Jesus enough. You've been in church enough. You've listened to enough radio or, or, or YouTube services. You've bumped into Jesus, but wouldn't you like to touch Him? Wouldn't you like to connect with Him? The Sunday school teacher was questioning her children about, she asked them, what's a miracle? One of the little girls said, it's something we can't do, but Jesus can. I like that definition of a miracle. You know what salvation is? It's something you can't do, but Jesus can. And by the way, whatever the situation is you're facing in life, and you say, I just don't know what to do, Jesus does. Jesus does. I know what you can do, and I know what you must do. You must look to Him. Because He's the one who can do the miracles. If you're looking for a miracle, look to Jesus. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this morning. Thank you for this woman who had the faith to come through the crowd and to find You and to touch the hem of Your garment. Thank You, God, for her persistence. Thank You, Lord, for the miracle You worked in her heart and in her life. And Lord, I'm praying this morning for people in this room they who may just be part of the crowd and they say, oh, I've been around Jesus. I've bumped into Him. But they never by faith have reached out and touched Him and ask Him to forgive their sin, and ask Him to be their Savior, and their life has been transformed. You had Paul write the church at Corinth and tell them, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. Lord, don't let people be in this room today who bumped into you and been around you, but they've never become a new creature in you. They've never placed their faith in Jesus Christ and seen you transform their life like you did this woman. Lord, may they know today it is no secret what God can do, that what He's done for others He'll do for them. I pray they know that your arms are open this morning to welcome them. May they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone as their Savior today. 